Today, we will be making sugar skulls. We will be starting in five, four, three, two, one. Everyone and welcome to Arts and Crafts with Luna and Maya, presented by Tira Caliente Academy of Arts and California Center for the Arts Escondido. We are approaching a very unique and special celebration in Mexican culture, and that is November 1st, Dia de los Muertos, Day of the Dead. Today we will be making and decorating sugar, sugar skulls. Day of the Dead is a celebration when we connect with our loved ones who have already passed away. It's a day of joy, memory, family, and tradition. Calaveritas de azúcar, or sugar skulls, are placed as a reminder to the living of the sweet destiny that awaits. Calaveritas de azúcar, or sugar skulls, are placed on the ofrenda, the altar, as decorations. And typically, the name of the loved one that you are trying to remember is written on the sugar skull's forehead. We will walk you through the process of making and decorating sugar skulls. Please note that Day of the Dead is not Halloween. They are two very different celebrations. So, let's get to it. For your sugar skull and icing, you will be needing your sugar skull mold, granulated white sugar, meringue powder mix, royal icing, water, gel food coloring, parchment paper. In this case, I use just regular paper, a piece of cardboard, a little bit bigger than your sugar skull. And for decorating, you can either use a piping bag or paint brushes, that is optional. You will be needing a whisk, a teaspoon measurement, and a cup. All right, everyone, let's start. So first off, you wanna start with one and one half cup of granulated sugar. Now remember, this is only for, well, for hours. It, it was only for one half of the sugar skull's head. If you're gonna do two of those, you wanna double up the measurements, you wanna double them. Now, you're gonna need one and one half teaspoon of meringue powder. All right, and now we're gonna want two teaspoons of water. And for mixing, I would recommend a whisk, like the one that I'm holding right now. And I would prefer a whisk because it mixes it more better. All right, now you wanna grab some in your hand and if it doesn't fall apart, then it's ready. Now, you're gonna want to get your sugar skull molds. There are some that are bigger than this and some that are smaller than this. So just keep that in mind. All of the molds are different sizes. Now, when you put your, what should we call it? When you put your mix in, you wanna make sure that you pack it really tight. If not, when you flip it over, it's gonna all like fall apart, break apart. Now, you're gonna want a piece of paper. Um, well, you wanna use parchment paper, but we didn't have that, so we just I just used um, note paper. And then you're gonna want a piece of cardboard, and the paper and cardboard need to be a little bit bigger than your mold. Now, it needs to set for 12 to 24 hours, but I would recommend 24 hours or more. Now while that's drying up, then you should, the next day, or whenever you're gonna 
whenever your sugar skulls are ready, you're gonna want one teaspoon of, wait, yeah. You're gonna want one teaspoon of water per three fourth cup of icing. And the icing, you're gonna want two cups, which is what we used in there. Oh wait, no, it's a tablespoon, not a teaspoon. And then same, whisk it around with a whisk, if you have one. All right, now that's the perfect consistency. All right, so it depends on how much you plan to decorate your sugar skull. Two teaspoons gives enough, gives you enough for two small sugar skulls. Now it doesn't have to be exactly two teaspoons, just, you should just use a spoon. Now, same with the coloring. It depends on how bright you're gonna want it. And here, you just wanna mix. You wanna mix until it's fully blended into the color. Now, we thought that it was a little bit to, we wanted it a little bit more bright, so we ended up adding a little bit more. Now with liquid food coloring, you want to use a little bit more. And if you're using gel food coloring, then you want to put a little bit more out as well. Now you're going to want a piping bag. It doesn't have to be a piping bag. It can easily just be a Ziploc or a bag at home. I would recommend a clear bag so that you can see what's happening. Now you're just gonna want to press it down to the bottom so that when you cut it, you're, it's gonna be an easy, you're gonna be able to easily just pipe it out. And here are the three colors that we are using. sugar skulls are set, it's time to decorate them. And while we decorate our calaveritas, let's reference two similar things that are also part of Dia de los Muertos. They are La Catrina and Calaveritas as verses. La Catrina usually wears her best outfit, a resemblance of the aristocratic women. It is a way to say that no matter your socioeconomic status, whether you are rich or poor, death comes for everyone. Also, it's a part of folklore, making fun of death in a friendly way, because death will eventually come for you as the natural cycle of life. And now back to our sugar skulls. Well, how did the tradition of painting your face as La Catrina begin? It started with Juan Jose Posada in 1912, when he created the image of La Catrina Carvancera. It represented those women who were once poor, but were able to reach high socioeconomic status. Also, those domestic servants, seen as stuck up because they tried to imitate what they are not but it specifically refers to those who chose to forget their origin, leaving behind their customs and wanting to look more European, more aristocratic. It wears a big hat of French influence, adorned with flowers and big feathers. It has bows behind the ears, symbolic element that serves a reminder to those Catrinas of their origin as when they were domestic servants, that's what they would use in their hair. And if we reference the Catrina Garbancera and Juan Jose Posada, then we have to talk calaveritas. Calaveritas are usually funny. They are verses to mock those Catrinas Garbanceras and the rich people, or simply reference the, to feelings and ideas around Dia de los Muertos. Hay hermosas garbanceras de corce y alto tacón, pero han de parar en calaveras, calaveras del montón. There are beautiful garbanceras 
with high heels and corset, but they will eventually end as skulls in the pile of bones. For more, tune in on Sunday for our Dia de los Muertos special presentation. Done! Now this is the final result of our sugar skulls. Mine has big eyebrows and dots on top. Mine has pink for the filling of the eyeballs and flowers on the edges. Thank you for watching this episode of Making and Decorating Sugar Skulls with Luna and Maya. Please note that traditionally, sugar skulls are not meant to be eaten. They are meant for decoration to put on your altar and remembering a loved one. See you next time.